ओम भूरभुव स्वहेत सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्मि धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 ओम साई राम डियर साई भक्तास I am starting my second video on Sai Satya Sai Baba's Gita. Now I'll start the video with the essence of the Gita. For Western readers who may not be familiar with it, here follows a summary of the traditional Bhagavad Gita as set down by the sage Vyasa. <clears throat> the Gita was given by Krishna to Arjuna just before a great war involving his army, his millions of combatants coming from kingdom scattered all over the Indian subcontinent. In massive encounters that raged daily for 18 days, the forces of good were pitted against the forces of evil. This war proved to be one of the bloodiest of all time. When it was over, only a handful of men survived. In this war, Krishna, who was God incarnate, took the humble role of a charioteer to guide Arjuna and the Pandava brothers to victory. But on the eve of the great war, it looked like the battle was lost before it even started. Arjuna, the foremost warrior on the side of good, had become overwhelmed with doubts, he decided to throw down his bow and not fight. This situation came about after Krishna had driven Arjuna's chariot onto the battlefield between the two armies. There Arjuna saw his beloved grandfather, his teacher and his kinsmen on the opposite side getting ready to fight and die for their cause. They had allied themselves with the forces of unrighteousness. Filled with a deep dependency, Arjuna said, O oh Krishna, I cannot fight. I feel overcome by a sense of helplessness. What good is winning this war when it will lead to the destruction of all these kinsmen, teachers and heroes? I do not know where my duty lies. I beg you to tell me what is right for me. I surrender myself fully to you. I am your disciple. Please teach me. Then the blessed Lord gave him the great wisdom teachings of the Gita. Krishna started the Gita teachings with an admonishment. Arjuna, sake of this faint-heartedness, it is not worthy of you. Do not yield to weakness. You have been preparing so long for this battle to preserve righteousness. Even as a man cast off worn out clothes and puts on others which are fresh, so the Atma cast off bodies and enters into others which are new. Bodies are born and what is born must die, but the eternal Atma is never born, it never dies. Weapons cannot cut it, fire cannot burn it, water cannot wet it and wind cannot dry it. This Atma is not your perishable body, it is your immortal self, the imperishable self of everyone. Once that is known, then what is there to grieve for? The wise never grieve, neither for the dead nor for the living. I am that Atma Arjuna, I am the Supreme Lord of all, residing in the heart of everything. I am the father of this world and also its mother and sustainer. I am the beginning, the middle and end. Everything is produced out of me. Everything is pervaded by me. No creature can exist without me. Whatever path men travel, it is my path. Whichever way they go, they reach me. Though I am eternally birthless and unchanging, yet I incarnate myself from age to age. Whenever righteousness declines and unrighteousness prevails, 
I take on a form to protect the good and to destroy evil. Veiled as I am by my inscrutable power of illusion, my maya, the world does not recognize me. Although they do not know me, Arjuna, I know them all. I know their past, present and future. In truth, I am ever unmanifest and imperishable, but not understanding this transcendental nature of mine, the ignorant regard me as a mere mortal. Knowing nothing of my reality, they ignore me and become occupied in the world with vain hopes, vain works and vain knowledge. Lost in the maze of Maya, they are spun around like puppet dolls on a merry-go-round. This divine illusion of mine is most difficult to overcome. Among thousands of human beings, only a few struggle to know my truth. Even among us, these that struggle only one perchance comes to know me in reality. Such a one is a yogi, one stabbed in the highest wisdom. Therefore, Arjuna, you should be a yogi with all your beings. Take refuge in me alone, and by my grace you will attain supreme peace. From this moment on, fix your mind steadily on my dwelling in your heart. Be devoted to me, bow down to me, worship me. Know that I am always within you, and soon you will become one with me. Yes, truly do I promise this to you, Arjuna, for you are very dear to me. He who knows my divine birth and work will not be born again after death. He will not lose sight of me, nor I am of him. Arjuna, whoever works for me and has me as his supreme goal, whoever is devoted to me and is unattached, bearing no mali malice towards any creature, will quickly come to me. Such a one sees me everywhere, residing in all beings as the imperishable amidst the perishable. For these who have me ever present in their minds, I and serve me steadfastly with affection. I will carry their burdens and I will give them what they need. Talking about me to each other, they are forever satisfied and delighted. Out of my compassion for them, I strengthen their power of discrimination and destroy the darkness of ignorance that beclouds their vision. Bringing their senses under control, they transcend the world of death and decay and attain immortality. Arjuna, whoever offers me with love either a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or even some water, such devout offerings coming from a pure heart, I will surely accept whatever you do, whatever you eat or sacrifice or give away, whatever austerity you perform, offer that first to me. Then you will be free of the consequences of your actions and soon your mind will become calm and wise. Steeped in renunciation, endowed with evenness of mind and having abandoned the fruits of your actions, you will be freed forever from the fetters of birth. Arjuna, resign every action to me. Fix your mind firmly on me. I will perform all your actions through you and liberate you from all sins. Fear not, by my grace you will overcome all obstacles. But if from self-conceit you do not listen to me, you will surely perish. You may think I will not fight, but impelled by your sense of duty, your own nature will compel you to fight. What out of delusion you do not wish to do, you shall do in spite of yourself. Arise, Arjuna, with this world of wisdom that I have given to you. Cut to pieces this ignorance which doubts the truth that the divine Unity is ever present in your heart. Arjuna, stand up and achieve glory. You are pleased to uphold righteousness. The forces of unrighteousness have become rampant. You must encounter them and destroy them. Take refuge in me, Arjuna. Think of me at all times and fight. It is not you who will kill these heroes, but I. I am the world's creator and sustainer, but 
I am also the mighty world destroying time that devours all. Truly, these warriors in hostile armies have already been slain by me. You are merely the instrument through which I act. Here, I give you a vision of my universal form in which you can see the oneness of all existence. Behold my divine power. Behold the whole universe moving and unmoving, all unified in me. Overwhelmed with wonder and amazement, Arjuna bowed his head in adoration and spoke with palms joined. O Supreme Lord, hail to you, hail again and again. If the effulgence of a thousand suns were to blaze forth together in the skies, their glory could compare only a little with your infi infinite splendor. You are the imperishable Lord, the undying guardian of the eternal dharma. You are everything that can ever be known. Seeing your awesome form, all the worlds are trembling with fear, and so am I. Just as the merry, many rivers flow towards the sea, so do all these heroes in the world of men enter your flaming mouths. Then the blessed Lord again assumed his usual gentle form as Krishna and said, Graciously have I shown to you this infinite primal form of mine. It is very rare indeed to see what you have just seen. Neither by study of the scriptures, nor by austerities, nor by charity, nor by rituals, but only by single-minded devotion can I be seen thus. This experience of my cosmic form and this sacred knowledge that I have taught you are the most precious of all treasures. Arjuna, have you listened to me with full concentration? Has the delusion caused by your ignorance been dispelled? Think over everything that I have said to you, reflect on it fully and then do what pleases you, what pleases you. Arjuna answered, O Lord of the universe, your powerful and wonderful words contain the highest wisdom, and you have spoken them with so much compassion. Through your grace, my delusion is now destroyed. I stand free of all doubts. Please direct me. I will do as you command. Now the Gita starts, part one. Love and duty, the path of perfection. If you want peace and if you want happiness, you must live in love. Only through love will you find inner peace. Only through love will you find true happiness. Love flourishes through giving and forgiving. Develop your love. Immerse yourself in love. These words of sign are a stream of love flowing out to you. Now, Baba's discourse starts, embodiments of love. There are many fields of knowledge, but there is only one supreme knowledge. This supreme knowledge is self-knowledge, the knowledge of the immortal self. It is the knowledge of your unchanging reality, your true self that which was never born and which will never die. There are many other types of knowledge. There are the different fields of art, science, commerce, and education, but these only help you to gain some transitory worldly objectives and worldly pleasure. To realize the eternal bliss, that is your own true nature, you must have Self-knowledge, it is the only knowledge that enables you to know the inner peace and the unending joy which is your own truth, your real identity. When you shine with self-knowledge, you become love itself. You become pure and completely selfless. Then you will always be in perfect harmony with all existence. <coughs> Just sit down. Dear friends, what is self-knowledge? Actually, what is knowledge? We consider the knowledge of science, physics, chemistry, biology, geology, or uh, 
history or geography or economics or commerce. See, these are the this knowledge is known as secular knowledge. And this knowledge is only for the sake of this body. When this body dies, this secular knowledge also when he sees. Remember this fact, very important fact. But knowledge of the self, knowledge of Atma, knowledge of God, all spiritual knowledge is the actual knowledge. Rest all is information which dies with the body. But the knowledge of self, knowledge of God, this is carried forward in our next birth. If we do not get liberation at least, we will be starting our new birth, new life with a standard, with a level where we are ending our this present life. So remember, dear friends, spiritual knowledge is actually knowledge. Rest all subjects we study in school, colleges and all, this is only for getting some job, money, etc. And this is completely confined to the body. Remember this. People say I am PhD, I am this and and the this is of no use as far as knowledge of the self is concerned. Pramahansa, Ramakrishna was illiterate as far as this secular knowledge is considered. Maharishi Ramana was just ninth standard past. But see his knowledge, see Rama Krishna Paramahamsa's knowledge. See, knowledge of Atma is the actual knowledge, otherwise knowledge of the subjects we study in school, college, this is not actually knowledge. So please try to understand this. People may think I have done post-graduation in two subjects, three subjects, I am tech, I am MD, Are Baba, this is okay. But what is your standard as far as spirituality is concerned? That is most important thing. We are proud of our knowledge, proud of our job, proud, proud of our property. But when we die, what is carried, nothing of the sort what we have stored in the whole life. But if you do some meditation, contemplation on the self, my dear friend, you are the richest man on earth. Otherwise, your all buildings, factories, firms are of no use as far as this spiritual life is concerned. Please try to understand. So, knowledge of the self is the real knowledge. Rest all knowledge is just for earning money and nothing else. Now, Self-knowledge is God-knowledge, Baba says. Self-knowledge is not different from God-knowledge. The sacred knowledge of God and the sacred knowledge of the immortal self are one and the same, as I already told. Self, Atma and God, Paramatma, are not different. God is Atma, Atma is God, so both are inseparable. If you can remember and understand this simple thing, you have 
got the knowledge otherwise you may be anything you may be am tag am do your so many things but now in the field of spirituality you are zero because you talk about your all property and all your job i am director general and so chief of the army staff and all my dear friend that is only making your ego rich it is having nothing to your atma please try to understand so they are the one divine wisdom when you realize the one self everywhere you become established in unity consciousness <laughs> see this unity consciousness is god is one atma is also god atma of everybody is god so everybody is equal that is the meaning of unity consciousness atma of everybody is the same nature of atma of muslims hindus christians six everybody is the same my dear friends there is no difference in this atma so atma and parmatma same no difference then you see only the oneness in all the diversity that is around you from that moment on you transcend worldly existence and gain the immortality you have been seeking oneness the word absolute try to understand we use the word absolute absolute means the truth that is one and that is god truth is one that is absolute truth and that is god is one atma and god is one no difference so the word absolute is derived from this knowledge that there is only one knowledge one truth one knowledge one power in the whole universe that is god that is the meaning of unity of consciousness see the word consciousness is used for atma please try to understand universal consciousness is used for parmatma and consciousness is used for atma dear friend water in the ocean is chemically made of two atoms of hydrogen one atom of oxygen take water from anywhere on this earth or in any other planet water means two atoms of hydrogen one atom of oxygen combined chemically same way atma is part of parmatma no difference in the atma of any body in this universe and parmatma that is the meaning of unity in consciousness what is the basis for this supreme knowledge its basis is purity of the mind my dear friends mind is the product of atma atma is pure when this mind goes in world this is the pure mind when it is in the vicinity of atma this mind is pure and that is the part of atma and finally when it enters the spiritual heart this mind becomes atma only because basically mind is atma only because mind is constituted by the thoughts arising from this atma 
but when it is going outward that mind becomes impure mind going outward is impure mind going inward to the atma is pure please try to understand to purify your mind you must suffuse your whole life with the spirituality engage yourself in noble activities associate with the spiritually minded people observe exemplary conduct in your daily life strive to do your duty to perfection live your life so that it is one of selfless service and virtuous deeds and study the wisdom teachings of the ages put them into daily practice let these teachings serve as your guide post then your mind will become purified and with a pure mind you will be able to discriminate between the permanent and the temporary between that which is beneficial and that which is detrimental to your spiritual progress then all your ordinary daily activities will become sacred and god's grace will be showered upon you dear all dear sairams those who are watching this video please understand i have intensively studied the holy books on paramahansa rama krishna swami vivekananda maharshi ramana satya sai baba and shirdi baba my dear friends i have come to this conclusion they were all true sages please try to understand they were and they were all true sages whatever they uttered truth truth and nothing different than truth truth is one truth is absolute please try to understand whatever they have told they have told the truth and truth is only one truth is not two so you read books of swami vivekananda books of pramahansa ramakrishna books of maharshi ramana or satya sai baba dear friends you will not find any difference i have read and understood their books and whatever i am telling you this is the gist of all the books atma and parmatma same atma and parmatma same no difference at all mind is the creation of atma atma is pure atma is part of god when this mind is away from atma it mingles with the world and becomes impure and this mind and atma there is in between one i thought i am the body thought that is called ego please try to understand this ego controls this mind and this ego completely denies entry to this mind entry to the spiritual heart this ego this ego prevents mind to go to atma so that is the man problem we see we are doing meditation we are doing sadhana we are going through austerities we are doing yoga pranayam what for just to weaken this ego and mind 
when the mind and ego are destroyed what is left is pure atma you are called self realized person please try understand this is the atam vidya of upanishads this is the atam vidya of our vedas this is the atam vidya talked by our sages ancient sages rishis and maharishis please try to understand this and you will find from each video what i am telling you you will also because in advance i tell you so that you will have some inkling you have the pre knowledge for understanding otherwise there are technical words you may be you know you may be simply or what is this these are the basic things remember for self realization mind is to be destroyed ego is to be destroyed because mind and ego both are acting as veils for the screen on the atma please try to understand another big word is their maya dear friends this maya is nothing but it is the shakti of god god acts through this maya god acts through maya what is ignorance the word ignorance does not mean you don't understand chemistry physics or biology that is not ignor ignorance means what is unreal you are taking it as the real and what is real you are taking it as unreal okay so due to maya we are confused between reality and unreality if we we completely leave the unreality and move to the reality no maya maya is non existent and forgetting the reality we enter into the unreality we are affected by maya so maya is nothing but taking unreality as a reality and a reality we are completely forgetting so this is ignorance agyan what is gyan i am atma this is gyan and i am so and so i am peter i am salim i am ram i am krishn this is maya i am the real self this is other than maya the reality so okay now now you may be highly please why i am talking in between because this will lead this will act as the guide post for you you will understand the topic easily you will have a prior knowledge now here now you may be highly learned in secular knowledge all the subjects we study in school colleges that is known as secular know dear friends you have watched this videos and experiences of devotees and miracles of baba please try to understand if you want to make baba happy please try to understand his teachings and follow them then only you are a sai bhakta you are a true sai devotee please do service for the poor best thing 
but the most essential thing baba wants from us is please follow he understand his teaching follow his teachings in the practical life otherwise we are not sai bhaktas we simply presume to be sai bhakta follow baba's teachings understand baba's teaching then you are it true sai devotee please try to understand this now you may be highly learned in secular knowledge you may be a great scholar you may be a world renowned expert in a number of fields but all your titles and achievements cannot confer on you real wisdom what is your real wisdom knowing about atma and god is the actual wisdom huh? discovery of this or that that is my dear secular knowledge wisdom see our intellect when this elect is used for the worldly affairs huh? that is intellect when the same buddhi same intellect used for spiritual progress that is known as wisdom one is buddhi the other word is sad buddhi please try to understand ek sad buddhi that is the actual when our buddhi is moving towards divinity that is known as wisdom please try to understand to be truly wise and remove the grief from your heart you must know who you really are the basic thing i told you realize your reality realize yourself that is the wisdom you must realize your immortal self what is your immortal self because atma is as janma azar amar atma our atma is never takes birth never dies it is not child young or old it is ever the same no difference no change no transformation atma is same in every situation it does not it is not affected by the age or religion or place atma is beyond ha huh? time and space time and space do not affect atma please try to understand if you can understand this sai gita my dear friend you can understand sai baba's teachings and follow them then become the true sai devotee you cannot transcend grief by any other path please try to understand only the knowledge of your true self will allow you to overcome all sufferings and misery other than atam vidya other than brahm gyan other than knowledge of atma and parmatma everything will lead us to sorrows and grief more and more property means more and more worries please think over it only the knowledge of your true self will allow you to overcome all suffering and misery this is the only knowledge that can best on your all happiness when you master a worldly field of knowledge you are in the respect of your peers you may become famous and fulfill your worldly aspirations but it is only when you acquire self knowledge that you deserve and earn the grace of god when you have that you become ever blissful you enjoy the ultimate happiness dear friends if you know satya sai baba please try to understand sai gita my dear friends excuse me sometime i may 
tell you something, Vita, please. My intention is to tell the real teachings of Satya Sai Baba. Please excuse me if I say something which you may, it may hurt you, but I have no such intention. Because if you want to make Baba happy, please try to understand this Sai Gita. I'm, I do not want my name or fame, something like that. I want my every Sai brother and sister know about this Sai Gita. Please. We are those, who are those who deserve to learn this sacred knowledge? Is it as some would contend exclusively reserved for old people? Or does a child deserve to learn it? Is it to be given only to religious initiates or should it be made available also to those who have no previous religious background? Should it be kept for men alone or are women equally eligible? Truly, to gain this wisdom, race, color, age, gender, nationality or social status are of no consequence. The sage Valmiki in his earlier life had been a highway robber. The sage Narda was born of a lowly maid servant, yet they both become great spiritual lights. Everyone is equally entitled to acquire this supreme knowledge. A word of caution. My dear friend, never think yourself as a sinner. Please. If you say I am sinner means you are committing the greatest crime of your life. Because you are not this body. The crime may be committed by this body, but Atma is untouched. Atma is untouched. Your prarabdha will take the action and the punishment will be given. So never think yourself sinner, dear friends, sisters and brothers, because never, never, the word sin should not be used, even if by mistake or in, by intention something is committed, a crime is committed, ask pardon from God and God is, God will pardon you, pardon you definitely, please. So, Atma is pure, remove this mind, remove this ego, you are a full joint Atma, please, never have the feeling because all your feelings, your emotional feelings, they create vasanas, they create your subtle impressions, they create your sanskaras. So always have positive affirmations. I am God. I am part and parcel of God. I am pure Atma. I am not this body. I am not this ego. I am not this mind. I am not this prana. I am none of the body organs, my dear friend. Have these affirmations. Sit for meditation and imagine, close your eyes and imagine all the negative energies are going up, up, up and through the sasra going out. My dear friend, after practicing for a few days, you will realize that some current is going from the feet to through 
your back, through your backbone, through your front, through your chest, and it is going, going upward, and it is going out. Please, this is a fact. After having some positive affirmations, just visualize that all your negative thoughts, all your negative vasanas, all your negative energy is moving out of my body. You will feel that some current is moving upward and it is going out. Then visualize divine prana shakti is entering into my body through sahasra. Sahasra means the uppermost part of your head, of your body. So, prana shakti is entering through your sahasra. All shiv shakti is entering through your sahasra. Baba's, Satya Sai Baba's, Shirdi Baba's, Shakti, Divya Shakti is entering, Grace, Divine Grace, Divya Kripa is entering, in entering. The grace of liberated souls, sages, rishis and Mahatmas present in the Devhumi Himalayas is entering. My dear friend, these are very simple things, affirmations, and you will enjoy, you will enjoy. This is the reality. Affirmations, the positive affirmations. Never think you are a sinner. Never think you are a thief. Never think, please, if by mistake or by intention something is committed by you, please take ask excuse from God and God will pardon you and then all your negative energy will go out, positive energy. Then realize and visualize positive cosmic energy is entering to my body through Sahasra and passing through Agha Chakar, through Vishuddhi Chakar, through Ajna Chakar, through Anahata Chakar, through Manipur Chakar, Swadhisthan Chakar, and finally through Muladhar Chakar. My dear friends, you will realize, you will feel that these are the real things. This is our Brahm Gyan. Now, the Lord comes to those who have devotion for Him. He looks at the heart and not at the outer status. Heart. Your heart and Atman same, my dear friends. There is no difference. Please try. Time to time I will be telling because these are the points we miss and just confuse ourselves. Heart is nothing but the Atma. Because Atma is omnipresent. Atma is not located at a particular point in the body, dear friends. Because Atma and Paramatma infinite. So, infinity cannot be confined in the finite. So, please. These are the basic things we have to understand. So, the Lord said in the Gita, you become very dear to me when you serve me with a loving heart. Wow, 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 wow. Develop your devotion. Devotion is very important to human life. People use the word surrender. That is the most confused and misunderstood word, refuse, saranagati. Dear friends, the word saranagati is used in Advaita Vedanta, in Upanishads and even Vedas and Shastras. 
just try to understand what is the meaning of surrender ego request atma and say i am surrendering myself to you so ego and mind are surrendering to the atma this is the actual sarnagati because god and atma same when you say i am i i means this ego ego says i am coming to take refuge at your lotus feet so whether atma or parmatma same there is no difference so dear friends sarnagati does not mean that this body will take sarana to in the fit of some other body physical guru is helpful but the actual guru is your atma please try to understand how faith in yourself how faith in your atma then you have done you are successful so faith is to have the faith in yourself faith in yourself means faith in god that is the actual word faith is used not faith faith is a very holy word and this faith is our ego takes refuge in the atma and have full faith and mind ego and atma becomes one and that is called self realization now faith in your now baba says faith in yourself and faith in god is the same when the lord counsels you to develop your devotion it does not mean that you should neglect your worldly duties prepare yourself thoroughly for all your worldly tasks take great care to properly learn the secular knowledge which you need to discharge your duties most importantly always have faith in yourself si baba said have faith in yourself 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 faith that you will be able to fulfill the role for which you have taken human life faith in yourself and faith in god is the real secret of greatness in truth they are the same for faith in yourself means having faith in your innate divinity that is parampita parmeshwar worldly knowledge can give you food and shelter already i have told you worldly knowledge can only give you food and shelter whereas self knowledge give you the greatest treasure of all the realization of your own reality still without some worldly knowledge you will not be able to obtain the knowledge of eternal you should not be careless in the sphere of worldly knowledge spiritual knowledge needs to be balanced with worldly knowledge the sages valmiki and vyasa were honored by everyone they wrote many holy scriptures including those timeless epics the ramayana and the mahabharata they were great spiritual light but they were also very well versed in the worldly knowledge otherwise how could they ever have written such great classics everything in the world is derived from god when everything comes from him what can you possibly offer him the only thing you can offer him is your love that is all he expects from you that is why a great poet sing beloved lord you are the all pervading reality when the entire universe is filled with you how can i build a temple to you when you are effulgent like millions upon millions of suns 
How can I offer you my small candlelight? When you are the invading reality of all beings, how can I call you be a, by a particular name? When the entire universe is in your stomach, how can I offer you a little food in worship? All I can offer you is my love, and all I can hope to do is to empty myself in you, who are the ocean of divine love. <laughs> the formless takes a form. For the sake of human satisfaction, you give name and form to the Lord, but in reality, he does not have any form at all. Yet he will take on a form so that you can express your devotion to him and worship him and thereby satisfy some of your spiritual yearnings. Whatever form of the Lord you choose to follow, worship him with a loving heart. Ramakrishna was not a learned man in secular matters. He was barely literate, but his mind was always engaged in worshipping the Divine Mother. With his heart brimming with love, he dedicated his entire life to the worship of the Divine Mother. <clears throat> He was living only five rupees per month, that was enough for all his needs. Through his intense one-pointed devotion, he became luminous. Today he is well known throughout the world. You can find Rama Krishna mission everywhere, he is universal. Dear friends, Satya Sai Baba used to mention very few Sages, Rama, Krishna, Paramahansa was among them, Vivekananda and Maharishi Ramana and Adi Sankracharya. See, because you will find in the teachings of Rama, Krishna, Vivekananda and Ramana, Maharishi and Adi Sankara, and Satya Sai Baba, you will find no difference. No difference. <sighs> Similarly, a robber, li robber like Ratnakara became the great Sis Valmiki because of his love for God. Parlada was the son of a demon. Demon. Nevertheless, he became luminous and pure with the divine love he had for God. Hanuman, a monkey, by repeating the name of Rama, become, became a glorious being who is honored throughout India. Jatayu was a bird who, because of his great love for Rama, murdered in the divine principle when he gave up his life. For devotion towards God, race, creed, gender, or any other distinctions make no difference at all. Everyone is equally eligible. The chapter on devotion is the most important chapter in the Gita. That is why we have started with it today. Devotion is not merely repeating the name of God. It is an undying and pure love for God. It is completely selfless in its nature, bereft of, bereft of any worldly desire. It is pure, permanent and eternal. This divine love should be practiced constantly in your daily life. My dear friends, we hear this word divine love, divine love. You know the actual meaning of divine love. You love your Atma, that is the divine love. When you love your Atma, you love God. You love divinity. This is known as divine love. Please try to understand. We love mother, father, brother, sister, and all. That is the love on a different level. But when we love our own Atma, that is the divine love. Loving the Atma, loving Paramatma is called divine love. Please understand this. So, my dear friends, 
I stop the video here because I want this holy book to spread among all my dear Sai devotees, sisters and brothers, please, whosoever watch this video, please share and pass it on to because Baba will be really very, very, very happy.